Get in, nerds. We are playing some Hearts of Iron 4. Uh, I did one thing off camera, and that is I organized my fleets. Uh, so you're going to see how that's going to go in a second. There we go. Um, we got our Atlantic fleet here with uh, six recon forces and a battle fleet consisting of four carriers, five heavy cruisers, and sundry escorts. We got our Pacific fleet here consisting of our main battle force with four carriers, our two lighter, uh, our two battle cruisers, a bunch of heavy cruisers, and escorts. <clears throat> we got uh, our recon forces, six recon forces here in this fleet, larger ones. Uh, and then we got our heavy strike force here with a bunch of heavy ships and some, uh, <clears throat> some destroyers as well. Um, we actually got some ASW destroyers in this fleet. I th in this. Uh, Force I'm realizing, I don't think those need to go there. Let's pop them into the ranks of the other uh, recon forces to fill them out. And then we got two uh, battle fleets, uh, two fleets full of raiding forces. So we're going to rename those. I'll just make sure I don't have ASW destroyers. ASW being anti-submarine warfare in my... Uh, my main battle groups, I do not. Um, it's probably time to design a fleet destroyer. We'll do that in a little bit. So, I want my best admiral in charge of my main fleet. Ernest King is very solid. Ooh. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna put him in charge. Uh, and then we're gonna put, for the Atlantic fleet, we're gonna put Nimitz in charge. Uh, for... First rating force, do we have a... Both these guys are good positioners. Um, ooh. Speed and damage is pretty good. We're going to put Halsey in charge of this one. And for the last one, I'll do Spruance. He seems good. I do not pay as much attention to navies as I think I ought to, if we're being realistic. But, you know, it is what it is. Still gaining naval experience at a good clip. So let's see. Uh, where are we with boats? Uh, I think I... Did I complete all my naval research? Not quite. But I do have enough to re to build a Destroyer 3. Do we not? No, I don't. I'm not even started on that stuff yet. All right. Well, so that'll be a minute. All right, well, let's go ahead and get going here. There's still... Uh, war has ended in North Africa, but uh, there's battle in Greece happening now. Um, so probably the Axis are going to get back Albania if they're able to punch through here. As far as getting Athens, uh, getting through this gap is really difficult. Unassigned divisions. Perfect. We have more Marines available. We'll go ahead and get them exercising as well. Um, still building up some capacity here. So we'll be able to design a new cruiser fairly soon. Um, I don't tend to use heavy cruisers all that much. I prefer to uh, do a lot of light cruiser work. Um, basically, I think I'm going to put up-to-date light cruisers in all of my recon forces, and then I'll do a dedicated fleet protection cruiser for my battle fleets that's going to contain basically one heavy battery to make the cruiser a uh, a a a, uh, a heavy cruiser so that it sits in the back, and then all AA all the time. I call this the uh, the rude ass cruiser design because it is very silly but very effective for anti uh, well for anti aircraft work. Let's see, we are still continuing to build up our CAG 39s. Let's go ahead continue to work on that. Um, let's go ahead and queue in a bunch more heavy assault divisions. 
That's going to once again put us at a deficit of infantry equipment, but that's okay. Um, I think after this we'll start going to back to regular infantry divisions. I've uh, extremely overproduced um, traditional artillery at this point, but that's that's okay. That that happens. That happens. Um, still building up industrial capacity. We are going to be doing an air increase. Uh, and that's going to be taking up most of our new factories. I think we... Right, it's... We're closing in on 41. Oh yeah, I queued up some, uh, sorry. This is an end of last session thing. Forgot to bring this to y'all's attention. I queued in some, a little bit more uh, infrastructure here, and then I queued up just a bunch of naval dockyards. Uh, this is an absolute metric ton of naval dockyards all across the Old South, um, and some in the West, and that's going to uh, help us build up a significant uh, naval presence. I am going to put a few more factories, uh, a few more mills in California, though, so I'll pop those up at the top. And here's our cruiser design, and I'm going to get working on the new destroyer hull as well. Uh, for artillery, we finished with our, our artillery artillery. Let's go ahead and get started working on AA for that tasty, tasty cruiser design I told you all about. So, let's take a look at what we want here. Uh, we'll set this going. We're going to want as much armor as we can. Dual purpose secondary battery. As for a general purpose cruiser, we're going to want uh, radar and an excellent fire control system. We'll put good AA in here. And then we're going to do three light cruiser battery threes. That's going to get us pretty respectable speed. And then for general purpose work, we're going to do one dual purpose secondary battery, one aircraft uh, catapult, and one AA gun. Give us perfectly respectable, almost six AA, 28.6 light attack, 8.3 light piercing. Perfectly reasonable light cruiser design. Uh, we're going to call this the general purpose light cruiser three. Go ahead and save that, and that means we can go ahead and mark General Purpose Light Cruiser 2 no longer uh, needing to be in production. Uh, we we'll use... Yeah. Battle Line Shipbuilders, that seems very strong. Well, I guess we haven't really bought all of our upgrades for, the, for these other ones yet. Um, Important news is some good, some pretty okay bonuses. Uh... Yeah, HP, armor, range, anti-air, light battery, hit chance, speed, light, heavy. We don't have any heavy. This one's extra production cost. I'm kind of torn here. I think, yeah, I think we're going for Newport News. Uh, so, we'll queue in a bunch of these. I'm not going to spend... I'm not going to allocate too many... Uh, dockyards to building them straight away right now. But we will eventually do quite a few. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and I've got a total of 12 recon fleets. So we're going to need one, two, we're going to need five more. Three, four, five. Uh, we're going to allocate each of these to our recon fleets, and that's just going to create a very solid, uh, dependable recon uh, force here. Right. Da, 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 da. And having good spotting forces is important. Uh, particularly having spotting forces that can uh, stand on their own to a certain degree is very, very valuable. Because um, your, your strike forces can't be everywhere at once. Um, in fact, in a lot of games, I am... Uh, 
I will often ground patrol forces to a certain extent when my strike force is not uh, available. Order design. Let's design team upgrades. Uh, how do I do this? Upgrade. Save. And that puts those... That makes those out of... Uh... Oh, well. Can't, can't do anything about that. So, how do we want to organize this? I'm going to go through uh, lower and lower numbers of dockyards, and that's going to uh, queue in naturally over time. Pop those down there. All right, Roosevelt v. Wilkie. Since the office of the President of the United States was first established, no president has ruled for three consecutive terms. However, mm, in light of the precarious state of the world and international developments in the last few years, President Roosevelt has decided to break with tradition and run for a third term. Republican Wendell Wilkie, characterized as a dark horse candidate with a background as an industrialist with limited political experience, has been critical both of Roosevelt's economic interventionism and his justifications for running for a third term. Although the candidates have much in common with their foreign policies and Wilkie wants to retain some form of the New Deal, many still consider this election a determining point for the future of American democracy. The Democrats, FDR is indispensable, this is just no additional effects. Or the Republicans, we want Wilkie, this changes uh, New Deal from an infrastructure uh, construction speed and stability buff to a, uh, an ideology drift defense and smaller stability buff and smaller infrastructure buff. It gets us some extra uh, political power as well. Uh, but we're going to go with Roosevelt since this is an historical run. The people have spoken. How's it looking? Oh, it's looking very good. Cool. We do still have this mission. I think I queued this up. Yeah, so that'll be done pretty soon. Very good. Post that there. Um, it does look like Greece is potentially... Well, Thessaloniki is still holding out. This is all mountains through here, so it's extremely likely that, uh, particularly since the Axis basically no longer has any kind of naval presence, as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, Bulgaria doesn't have ships. Romania has functionally no ships. Um, until the Axis gets hungry for uh, Yugoslavia, which they are likely to, um, until that happens, we're, uh, Greece has a pretty good shot at staying strong right now. How's the whole, it's looking good. Let's see. Still working on building up here. There's Usace, and that gets us to the end of our, um, our extra... Stuff. Should I go for the Manhattan Project right now? I think there are other things that are more useful to have in the short term. So let's take a look at them. Strategic bombing to speed up our, uh, our aircraft production would be pretty solid. Bureau of Ships. That's what we want. Get us a big chunk of Navy experience and reduce all of our production costs for our uh, ships. Which will be really, really nice. We've got a good chunk of naval experience right now. So let's go ahead with another spend here on Doctrine. We've maxed out Marines, which is pretty good. And we've got a bonus for from the Louisiana Maneuvers. We could go with the second level of Superior Firepower Doctrine. I think we're finished designing templates for the moment. So that might be worthwhile, but we're going to save it for the moment. Here we go. German Reich declared war on Yugoslavia. All right, we knew that was happening. Yugoslavia joins the Allies. Um, this is... Oh, interesting. King Paul just died, and now Peter is uh, running the show here. Um, so this is going to significantly widen this front. Um, UK is probably going to deploy troops in here. Uh, they did successfully take out Zadar, which is good for them. Um, let's then reallocate those troops off to the north. So we'll just see how things go in Yugoslavia from here. Uh, so this was uh, mid-November. Uh, mid I don't know why I almost said September there. 
Um, Germany is pushing in here. That's predictable. Um, Hungary's got a little bit of a... Uh, okay, here we go. Now they're starting to really, really push in hard from all directions. Alright, so Yugoslavia is going to experience probably a historical uh, collapse in the face of Axis aggression. Uh, here is our first heavy assault division. Put these units down here. Uh, put, no. Didn't mean to do that. Whoopsie doodle. We're going to go into that army there. And this army is going to be exercising as well. Um, we have some air experience. So let's go ahead and get started on strategic destruction. Um, we do have a bonus from the Air War Plans Division, so we'll go ahead and use that. Um, so, strategic destruction is the historical United States air doctrine. By bombing enemies' factories, either by night or more dangerously during the day, we can seriously hinder their war machine. Um, historically, the British and the Americans did something called the Combined Bomber Offensive, which is American bombers ran sorties during the day, and British bombers ran them at night. Um, I'm still... I don't have to decide until down here, so we'll, we'll leave that for a second. Well, we look at the top. So, uh, infrastructure destruction. This gives us ground support plus 10% with our uh, tactical support, which is very good. Or home defense. This gives us extra detection for interception. I'm going to go with this one. Um, I don't think we need interception detection much as the United States. Uh, increase the speed back up here. Let's check and make sure this isn't anything... Could get Guerrilla Fighter, but Entrenchment Speed is only so useful to me. Uh, we'll go back to checking out Yugoslavia. The war moves fast in Europe. Um, Yugoslavia is still holding out. For now, at least. Um, and Greece, obviously, is experiencing something of a reprieve. Probably due to the increased front. In fact, there's... Oh! The Greeks took back... Uh, probably encircled an enemy division down there, which is good for them. One or more enemy divisions. Looks like they've stopped up the axis as so they move this way. Uh, Belgrade is currently in the process of falling. Um, historically, this is a war that happened kind of in May of 1941 and delayed the timetable of Operation Barbarossa, which was Germany's invasion of the Soviet Union, uh, by about a month. But uh, military historians err as the fall of Yugoslavia. Uh, military historians have suggested that it probably would not have mattered uh, in terms of the success of Operation Barbarossa. Just on account of Operation Barbarossa, um, they couldn't have gone any earlier than they did because uh, the ground was still all mudded up from the spring. Um, so that's another one of those. Because I think there are a lot of people who say, like, well, if Yugoslavia hadn't gone the way it went, then Germany would have been able to to get started earlier, and then they might have won against, uh, won and collapsed the Soviet Union in 1941. I, I don't think that's realistic, and most of the historians that I've read agree. Or I should say, most of the historians I've read don't agree with that, and that's the basis of my opinion. I don't want to tell you that I've got a different opinion from historians. I don't. Trotsky survives assassination attempt. This isn't a historical event, but that's fun. The old Bolshe Bolshevik, Lev Trotsky, was attacked today in his home by an armed group who carried out a raid in his villa. The assailants burst into the room where he was, firing wildly and without aim and hastily disappearing, leaving behind an unscathed Trotsky who had managed to hide behind the bed with his wife and grandson. Trotsky was once the top lieutenant and heir presumptive of Vladimir Lenin, but after a fair failed power struggle, he was forced into exile from the Soviet Union by Yosef Stalin. Speaking to the press, Trotsky denounced the attempt on his life as, quote, yet another cowardly plot hatched by Stalin to silence his critics. Interesting. Trotsky is the famous disappearing man from uh, Soviet photos. Japan is continuing to push through here in Hebei province. Um, although their, their progress in the north... Oh my goodness, they finally got Taiyun. They got Taiyun, friends. All right, so that's going to put... 
Shanxi on the back foot. Hungarian bomber competition. The Hungarian Air Force is currently holding trials for a new medium bomber. According to our air attaché, our newest model, our newest model, is poised to win. A formal request from the Hungarian government is expected shortly. Representatives of the manufacturer are strongly in favor of this sale, but there are national security concerns about selling our most modern equipment to a foreign country. Should we permit the sale to go through? Absolutely. This gives us some extra. This gives them air experience. Um, and lets them license our, our medium bombers, or we can't risk any leaks. I'm going to refuse. Uh, I don't want I don't want Hungary building my bomber. They're in the Axis, for Pete's sake. King Carol II abdicates. Uh, but before we take a look at that, um, I just want to take a look at this here. Okay, so Shanxi is almost uh, completely capitulated at this point. And if they're able to accomplish that, then they'll have... Uh, a free attack path to communist China. So, King Carol II abdicates. Pressured by powerful elements in his government, King Carol II of Romania saw no choice but to announce and sign his abdication. His successor is King Michael, but many of the dictatorial powers obtained by Carol have been vested back into the government, and so it is unlikely the young king will be able to wield similar power as his predecessor. Following his abdication, Carol appears to have emptied appears to have emptied his expansive bank accounts and has fled into exile, taking up residence in one of Mexico City's more expensive neighborhoods with his mistress, Magda Lupescu. Maybe he's neighbors with Trotsky. We'll see. Because I think that's where Trotsky's living historically. Um, interestingly, uh, government of Montenegro. Oh, interesting. Italian puppet. Neat. Um, allies are still holding here in Greece, though. Front has shrunk significantly, so they may still be pressing forward. Oh, the allies have also achieved complete success in Ethiopia, it appears. So good for them. Franco's still, Franco's still just chilling, relaxing. In his own lane, moisturized, hydrated, not worrying about anything. Yeah, we'll go ahead and grab one more. It's going to give us even more capital ship uh, armor. And this one is... Sorry, I forgot to read the effects of this. I haven't been reading the effects of the naval doctrines. We'll go through that maybe later. Uh, Italian-Bulgarian Military Technology Exchange. After reaching out to the German government, Bulgaria now seeks to strengthen relations with Italy. Uh, Boris III and Benito Mussolini have signed a research agreement developed by experts from both countries to facilitate the development of modern military equipment for their armed forces. Along with this agreement, the Bulgarian government has implemented new economic regulations to promote the investment of Italian capital in the country. They're dealing with the devil! There's still a lingering question of whether or not Italy can go back to, uh, can get back to Africa. But I think Britain's pretty much got complete control over the Mediterranean at this point. Yeah, they still have a pretty substantial battle fleet. Um, there's the air that we like. So we'll do anti-tank. No, we're not doing anti-tank yet. Because we gotta do industry. Don't forget to research industry. ABFRI, always be forgetting to research industry. All right. And that'll get us plenty of space to build up new uh, military factories. We've also got British troops doing multiple landings in Sardinia. Doesn't seem like with all that much success, but we'll see. And there's the 1940 carrier fully researched. So we'll grab the updated depth charge mortar. They're still holding out in Greece. This is quite impressive. Um, although, obviously, I suspect there are a certain number of British troops here, but still. Um, it's very impressive. Greece is continuing to hold. Uh, Ioannis Metaxas is the leader of the government. He is surprisingly... Government is surprisingly uh, friendly towards fascism, but they're still fun-aligned. So enjoy that for the moment. 
We're continuing to build up in efficiency with respect to infantry equipment, and I think we've got, yeah, we've got a, a good solid surplus now. Representative criticizes president. Very good. I'm just going to quickly go ahead and queue in another army here. Well, at least half an army for now. And yeah, we'll do a whole army. That's going to take some time. Not that much time, though. We'll eat into our, our fairly substantial artillery supply for the moment. It is nice to have a massive supply of excess artillery to play with. Uh, we definitely need more uh, dockyards in our repair queue. So we'll go ahead and do that. Looking pretty good for CAG 39s. Let's see how that looks time-wise. 126 days, that's not ideal, but it is what it is. Bureau of Ships is complete. So at this point... Extra dockyard construction speed will be very useful in the pretty near term. So we'll go ahead and grab that. We got two more armored uh, divisions. Go ahead and get those exercising. And I'm actually going to, yeah, we got eight in here, so that should be fine. Still building up our supply of medium tanks, but we're closer than it felt like we were a little while ago. Still kind of pressing forward with mechanized, but we're kind of inevitably going to uh, outrun our ability to produce medium tanks with our ability to produce mechanized, provided we have the rubber we need, which we're going to continue to trade for more of. Though we're getting more from uh, our industry here. Very good. We'll set uh, production efficiency going once again. And I think at this point we can afford to finish out our naval doctrine. And that's a completed base strike doctrine before the war, which is a very good state to be in. Um, we are quickly hurtling towards war. I think the timetable is going to be August of 1941 is when Japan is going to decide to get fighty with me. So we'll... Uh, we'll definitely be concerning ourselves with that. I think at this point, I'm going to end the naval exercises. No, you know what? They can go on a little longer. I'll end the naval exercises for the big, for the the main, the big battle fleets. Make sure we can get those boats repaired. I'm going to turn off automatic split off. Uh, I think automatic split off is not a good uh, thing to have on. I'm just checking all my other you know, uh, naval forces to make sure they don't have automatic split off enabled. Cool. So we'll get a few more uh, Navy experience before the start of the war. Excavation 3. Very good. Uh, is it more important to get construction or rubber processing? I think it's more important to get construction, but only just. We'll definitely go to rubber processing for these destroyer hulls, because we're going to spend an absolute ton of rubber building up these uh, these these uh, strategic bombers that we're building. They take four rubber per factory, so they're extremely rubber intensive. Destroyer hull. Very good. A limited bonus from armored infantry. It is 1941. We could do an early uh, 1942 mechanized rush. We continue to put a pin in our ability to, uh, to mass produce mechanized, but it would make them better, which would be pretty cool. Pretty cool to have better uh, infantry. We'll go ahead and deploy these tank units and pop them in our armored army. And we'll get those units trained. Still continuing to build up our supply of, uh, of rubber and whatnot here, but, well, I guess we don't need quite as much of it. 
but we're we're going to need more eventually, so it's 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 important to keep it going. Ready. Got a bunch of infantry divisions here. Let's go ahead and let me see. Ready. I'm gonna grab half of these. Put them in their own army, and we'll just go ahead and assign leaders to these armies. Let's put Hodges in command over here. He's going to be our combined arms guy. And then this army is going to be Bradley. And we'll give him... I am very tempted with Fortress Buster. Let's give him Fortress Buster. I like Fortress Buster. And then what we'll do is once these heavy divisions are... Or not these ones. Um, once these heavy divisions are fully uh, built up... We'll put um, six each in these armies and have those be our, our, our large assault armies. And there's the capitulation of Shanxi. The Japanese finally made it happen. Um, probably that does not mean much change in territory, although Japan gets hold of this stuff. Um, but units from here will probably be able to get back to Shibe Sanma or Communist China without too much difficulty. Japan is continuing to press forward here in the north, um, which is interesting. This is normally a very, very bad supply area. Um, and when I'm playing as Japan, my way into Chongqing is often th up through the south to take out the Guangxi click and, and uh, Yunnan, and then to come up and grab Chongqing. But um, it's a slog for sure. Let me see. I think it's March. I think in maybe I think once we hit April, I'll go ahead and end our naval exercises. I'm going to grab our infantry equipment, pull this down in priority, but we are for sure going to put... Uh, another five factories into those because we want to continue to produce the infantry equipment that we need in order to do all the work we want to do. And by the work we want to do, I mean building new armies. Put these boys in DC. Let's see, we are actually full up on infantry equipment again. So we'll put a new half army into training. That's one too many. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and add another 12 heavy assault divisions. And that will probably take us into the, uh, into the beginning of the war. That'll be all the troops we'll be able to build. So we'll be able to have about a quarter of our divisions be these uh, these stronger assault divisions using these light self-propelled artillery that we've built. It's going to take us a long time to build enough of those to uh, actually get that going. Maybe we'll queue in some more factories later. But uh, for now, those are just that's just going to be a whole process. Do have a lot of Places we could throw some more uh, a few more mills in here, but I don't want to stuff these areas too hard. Oh wait, no, it's only it's only Oklahoma and Arkansas. Well, that's fine. We'll build those up. All right, there's the Maritime Commission. That's going to make the building of those. Uh... Oh my gosh, brain. My brain, my brain. It's so bad. Those dockyards, <laughs> a lot faster. Um, all right, so Pentagon up to Department of Defense is really solid um, to get us extra command power gain and maximum, but I think we're going to go with strategic bombing for now. 
Again, that'll help us produce more strategic bombers, and that's going to be very, very important. I think it is the beginning of April, so at this time, we're going to cease our naval exercises. And we're going to move our Atlantic fleet over to Virginia, as is our secondary raiding fleet is going over there. And all these other units can be based back in San Diego. Sadly, our big battle cruisers. Ooh. The Chester Concession. Oh, this. In 1923, the newly founded Republic of Turkey ratified and approved a piece of legislation allowing us to develop Turkey's oil fields and railways. The United States Senate, taking into consideration the toll the Great Depression was taking on the American economy, decided not to ratify the treaty. Turkey has reversed their annulment of the treaty and asked us once again to fulfill the stipulations of the concession that was originally drafted up by us. It cannot be denied that economically we are in a much safer place than we were in 1923, and it would be a great boon to have Turkey ideologically and military aligned to us. However, war looms over the entire globe, and even from our position of strength, we must be economical about how we devote our resources. Having oil available in Turkey might in the future be quite valuable as leverage against the Soviet Union, but in the short term, we must also consider the possibility of how that unearthed petroleum might fall into the hands of our enemies. It might be wise to leverage the Turkish need for our help to, to further their, uh, our own aims. Turkey contains a lot of chromium, while our nation unfortunately does not. The choice is ours. You shall aid all friends of democracy. This gives them some research bonuses and some off-map civilian factories. Or we shall aid them conditionally. Uh, this gives us... I think it gives them the same bonuses, but um, it gives us access to resources in Antalya. Where's Antalya? Oh, goodness. All right. <laughs> Hold on. Here we go. Antalya. So what's an Antalya? 84 chromium. Oh, that's a lot of chromium. Oh, man. We're going to aid them conditionally. Give me that chromium. Um, all right. So the Tizard mission. The British government have sent us a scientific delegation led by Henry Tizard with an interesting proposal. The British are willing to pool, the, pool their research efforts with ours in several key areas as they do not have the industrial capacity to produce their inventions in great numbers. An excellent proposal. This gives us, this gives them research bonuses and costs us a little bit of political power. No, the British are on their own. Or we should aim for more long-term cooperation. Uh, United States Children's Research Sharing Group. Uh, I think the third one is better overall for the UK, but I'm not sure. I think we'll do the third one. Let's do it. I don't know to what extent this helps them. Turkey deny our demands. The Turkish government has rejected our very fair conditions that we established in exchange for our help. If the Turkish government was just, as, was just willing to chip in its fair share, then everybody would have walked away a winner. Instead, they'll just have to wait a few more years yet before they ever strike any of that black gold. We're at the United States and we're still walking away as winners. Well, that's a shame. I wanted all that tasty, tasty chromium. I'm going to get delay. It's only 35 army experience with the bonus we got from our uh, military exercises. We've still got plenty in the pot here. The Flying Tigers. The war in China has taken its toll on the Chinese Air Force. Outnumbered and outgunned by their opponents, they have fought gallantly to contest this, to contest the skies over China. Despite the bravery of their pilots, the Chinese Air Force is desperately searching for new planes and pilots to replace the losses. A delegation sent by Chiang Kai-shek has arrived in Washington to negotiate the transfer of about 150 modern fighters and allow a similar number of pilots to go to China to fly those planes. We must support them any way they can. We must not allow ourselves to be drawn into this conflict. First one gives us 5% war support. Second one costs us 10% war support and makes Japan happy. 
makes China mad. Uh, we'll do the first one. Um, so that's going to activate a, a thing we can do. Here we go, Dispatch the Flying Tigers. Um, this will give them 5% war support and 150 fighters. Uh, which we're definitely going to do. Uh, yeah. Here you go, have 100 fighters. Enjoy, China. Alright. Flying Tigers formed. Following a Chinese appeal for American pilots and mechanics to join a volunteer outfit, United States President Franklin Delano Roosevelt has officially approved the transfer of more than 100 modern fighter planes to the Chinese Air Force. Pilots in the U.S. Navy, uh, Army, Navy, and Marine Corps are also given leave to join this unit. The first ships carrying new fighters are supposed to leave as soon as necessary equipment is assembled. Congressional leaders have expressed concern that skirting the edges of international law like this will invite repercussions. Good hunting. Uh, and with that, I think we'll put a pin in today's episode. I've had a good time. I hope you all have had a good time. And I will see you all on the other side.